Welcome back to another episode of the Lender Podcast. My name is Bryce. I'm your host. And today we're talking about why I believe that being a hard money lender is the best possible business model out there. And I've got a couple different reasons why I think that is. But before we jump into the episode, first and foremost, this podcast episode is sponsored by Lender, join Lender, L-E-N-D-R.com. Lender is a hard money and private money servicing tool. So if you're currently using Excel to manage all of your borrowers and investors and loans and interests and everything like that, it's probably time to upgrade to a better solution. We use Lender in our own business and we've really really appreciated the services and the additional support and all the tooling that it provides. And it's completely transformed our business ever since we did switch off Excel. So if you're looking for something like that, check out joinlender, L-E-N-D-R.com. Now getting into today's episode, we're talking about why I believe being a hard money lender is one of the best business models out there. And just a, a little bit of back context and criteria. I've, you know, I've, I've been in business for, geez, honestly, probably my whole life. I mean, I've ever since I was a little kid, I had, you know, little businesses here selling candy on the playground or, you know, little, little things like that. I've just always been an entrepreneur at heart. And so, you know, I've, I've had a lot of businesses and I've had some that have failed and I've had some that have done. Okay. Real estate probably is, is one of those better businesses. And then I've had like some software companies that have not done well. I've had I don't, I don't know. I've got, I've got a graveyard of, of businesses that, that didn't work out. And I, I think that's pretty common with, with most entrepreneurs and business owners. You just, you see a lot, you have to try a lot of different things before you have something that actually takes off. But the reason I say all of that is because I have, I've come up with a set of criteria and a set of rules that I have to follow personally before I can now jump into a new business venture. And the reason why I set this criteria is mostly just for myself to safeguard myself um, and, and hard money lending actually checks all of these boxes. And I'll, I'll go through this, this cr criteria with you here in just a second. But I, I set this, this business criteria to restrict myself, essentially making sure, is this really something that I want to pursue? Is this something that I can see myself doing for a long time? And, and more importantly, is, is this like a low hanging fruit? Is this a low opportunity? Because there's a lot of people who are saying, you know, I've got the, the next idea for an app. Okay, cool. Well, you, you know, you spend all this time and you build the app and you charge $5 and you get three people to buy it. Like it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The, the economies of scale are not there. It's just not really a great business idea. So all that to say that I've got, I've got this list of, of business criteria on my phone and I'm, I'm going to read off this just because otherwise I'll, I'll mess it up. So first and foremost, there's, there's this quote by Tim Ferriss and he says, am I hunting field mice or antelope? A lion needs to catch only one antelope to have food for several days, but even if a lion is starving to death, it should never hunt mice. A lion burns more calories hunting mice than it does getting back from eating them. And I, I, I don't know. I love that visual. I think that's a great, a great analogy for business and, and what opportunities are, you know, good to, good to pursue. So that's a long winded intro, but all that to say that these are the different criteria that I have to hit before I pursue any business and hard money lending checks all of them. So first and foremost, it has to be high ticket. And when I say high ticket, I say each, each widget, whatever, whatever thing you're selling has to be $500 or higher. Like I'm not, I'm not selling a $10 a month thing. I'm not selling a $50 a month thing. It has to be at least $500 or higher. And in our hard money lending business, the, the minimum origination fee that we charge is $2,500. So whether we're doing a $20,000 loan or $200,000 loan, like the, the minimum we accept is $2,500. Obviously, if, if you're doing higher and you charge the points, then you'll make significantly more than the $2,500 in just the origination. But whether it's a $5,000 or $10,000, we, we do not accept lower than a $2,500 origination. And just because it's, it takes time, it's consuming to underwrite the deals and it's just, it's not worth it if it's going to be a couple hundred dollars. So $500 minimum and hard money hits that. The other thing is it has to have 80% or higher gross margins. I know a lot of people are thinking, holy cow, like there are not many businesses that hit that. And that's, that's true. I just, I'm, I'm not going to start a painting company because the cost of labor and the cost of materials are so expensive. Like the margin on, on a painting business is 10, maybe 20, 20%. If you're really good, maybe 30%. Um, I don't know if you've done any, you know, DIY house projects lately, but you go down to Sherwin Williams and it's 60, $70 for a can of paint. You know, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense anymore. So hard money lending is great because 
there's no inventory. There's no, you know, you're just, you're selling math essentially. And so, yeah, there is some overhead. You do have different software and costs and things like that, that you have to incorporate. But for the most part, we found that we can hit significantly higher than those 80% margins. The next thing on the list is there has to be, there can't be a one-to-one -one correlation on my time compared to what I earn. So basically I make money whether I work or not. And obviously every business requires work. Of course, but as soon as the original, you know, loan, as soon as the original origination is done and the loan is being serviced, you're just, you're collecting interest by the day and it just accrues. And I don't have to do any additional work until the, until the borrower requests a payoff statement from us. So, uh, it's, it's a great way to, to leverage at scale. Next thing is there's has to be low or no ever overhead. And what I mean by overhead is heavy machinery, employees, materials, materials that expire, large warehouse space or expensive rent, or, you know, just a lot of things that make it so hard for your business to thrive because you just have this massive stack of bills that you have to pay every single month before you're even profitable. Um, so I had, I had a friend who started a, a meal prep company and, um, it was a great service and I actually, I really, I really liked it. It was, the meals were super healthy, but they had the hardest time just because the cost of food prices that with inflation and everything else increasing, not only was the labor cost super high because you had to have all these employees cook and prep and cut and fill the containers and label them and ship them. It, it was just, it was so expensive. And on top of that, any extra inventory that they had, it expired, you know, food only lasts couple of days to a week before you can't really use it anymore. It's not fresh ingredients. So no, no overhead or very low overhead whenever I'm running a business and we, we run our hard money lending business out of our house. So there's, you know, I'm, I'm paying my mortgage anyway. There's really not that much above and beyond that. And the other thing too is, is great is like, you see a lot of people that have a $5 million, $10 million, $50 million operation, sometimes with as low as three or four employees, you know, like starting out, like you might just have one, you know, just yourself as you grow to five or 10 million, you might just have another employee who's part-time. So it, you, you don't, it doesn't require a lot of expensive labor to do, you know, to do what we do. Um, this doesn't really apply to, to hard money, but another bullet point that I put in my business criteria is there has to be low to no additional cost for each additional customer or every product that's sold. So I, I do a lot of like digital businesses or software products or, you know, whatever that is, because yes, there's a large investment up front, but as soon as that's paid for and I've capitalized on that, each additional customer is essentially free to onboard onto the product or you make a, a digital download or, you know, whatever it may be, you don't have to do any additional work for each additional customer that's sold. Um, next thing is there has to be a large TAM and TAM is the total addressable market. So you just essentially have to have a lot of customers to sell to. And in, in our line of business, private lending, I have not had a shortage of customers. There are a lot of people out there, especially with the advent of all these flipping TV shows, HGTV and, you know, Chip and Joanna Gaines and everything that's going on. Flipping is all the rage right now. Everybody wants to flip a house. And so there's no shortage of customers who have come to us. And right now our, our constraint is capital. Really. We have so many applications and so many deals coming in that we just can't really keep up with the demand. And we haven't seen that slow down. So, and you know, to, to extend on that, Look at some of these nationwide lenders. You've got Kiavi and, you know, Pure Street Capital, I think it's another big, like there's these big, big institutional lenders who they're, they're nationwide. Like they have so many customers because there's always going to be a need for capital. The next thing is, is it sticky? And when I say sticky, I mean, is it something that people are going to use over and over again? And a lot of, I would say most, if not all of our borrowers have done more than one loan with us. So they'll, they'll get in and they'll see how easy it is, how great it is to work with us. And then the next time they have a project, they come back to us. There are very few times that we don't have a repeat borrower. So there are ways to make it more or less sticky. Obviously you want to have a stickier product and, and that's probably a, you know, out of the scope of this episode. We can talk about that in another episode, but it, it has to be something that people come back to time and time again. And I, I think of like a makeup company. My, my wife has, I don't know what brand she uses, but she's always buying more makeup and it's from the same company. As soon as she out, as soon as she is out of her makeup, uh, she has another order on the way and she just 
is never without makeup. So find something that people want to repeatedly buy over and over and over. Uh, I, I kind of already touched on this, so we'll, we'll skip this, but it has to be scalable. This is obviously a very scalable business. You've got capital and investors and more and more borrowers. This is definitely something that can be scaled. Another checkpoint is, can it be semi-passive at some point? And I, I cringe a little bit when I hear this because a lot of people think, oh, passive, like I don't have to do any work and I just get some money. Like, yes, there are some passive-ish businesses, um, but what I mean by passive is they're at some point where I can step away and allow the business to more or less run on its own, either with employees or some other automation or things like that, just so that I don't have to be like deeply involved in the day-to-day -day operations. And with private lending, you don't really, you know, you can have someone to handle the origination. You can hire someone to handle the servicing and maybe you want to just deal with, maybe you want to be the controller, you know, whatever you want to do, but like, it's not something that I can't take a vacation from and still have the business run without me. Um, and then the last two points is, can I commit to doing this for five plus years? And, and when I say five plus years, I mean, really commit and like not get distracted. This is something that I've, I've learned from Alex or is that like you, there's really no such thing as multitasking. You absolutely have to focus on just one thing and not get distracted. And I don't think that's very common in the entrepreneurship world is that like, there's always that that shiny object syndrome. There's always a new opportunity. There's always a new business. There's always something new and attractive that can make you more money or is going to be easier or more exciting or you know whatever it is. But before I jump into a business, I have to really commit. Can I do this for at least five years? Because if you really want something to be big and to scale and grow, you have to you have to give it the time. And so. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a, a personal decision is, is private lending or hard money lending something that you could commit to for a decent amount of time to really build out the systems, grow the network, grow your capital investors, all those. And for me, the answer is yes. Like this is something that I've really enjoyed and I want to do long time or full time. And the last, uh, last bullet point that I have for myself is it has to be B2B and not B2C. So business to business and not business to consumer. The reason for that is I have done a lot of B2C products. And at the end of the day, I've just come to realize that businesses have more money to spend and the churn on B2C products is significantly higher than B2B products. Uh, and so it's just, it's just easier when you're doing B2B versus B2C. It's like, it's like doing business on, on hard mode versus easy mode. I would much rather sell a product to somebody who A, wants what I have and B, has money to buy the thing that I'm selling them. So it's just kind of a no brainer in, in my mind. So never again will I do another B to C product. And just, just for myself, I've, I've added a couple examples of good and bad services. So a good example of good business is a digital, you know, digital course or selling education or affiliate marketing or software, which is one of my favorites, e-commerce or real estate, because there's a lot of high leverage. Um, a bad example, I've already shared these both, but like a food services, cause you've got a high cost of goods and the products expire. Painting is super low margin and you trade time for money, like a, a cleaning service, unless you can leverage other people's labor, like hire employees. It's really not a great business because there's a one-to-one -one correlation on your time versus how much you make. Um, and then there's, you know, the headache of having to deal with all that. And anyway, so good businesses, bad businesses. And ultimately this is why I have decided to become a hard money lender just because I found that a, I really enjoy it. B it still gives me the nerdy side where I can run the numbers and look at the analysis and see if everything makes sense, but I don't have to get super crazy dirty with dealing with the contractors and the headaches of delays and, and projects not going according to plan and you know all these different things like that when a project doesn't go according to plan as a lender i i profit so it's actually a really good business model in my my opinion because more often than not things do not go according to plan so all that to say this this is the criteria and the rubric that i look for before starting any business and private lending checks every single box and I will not pursue another opportunity because I've, I've been through the ringer. I've had good businesses and bad businesses, but I will not pursue another opportunity that doesn't have all of those. So this is why I personally choose to be a hard money lender and why I think it's one of the best business models out there. You, you may disagree with me. And if so, I actually want to hear it. I want to hear your opinion, but uh, that's it for today's episode. And hopefully you 
gained a couple of things or hopefully two. And like I said, if, if you have any, any questions or comments or complaints or feedback, I would love to hear it because I, I just love learning from other lenders. So that's it for this week. We will catch you next week. Thanks for watching.